Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Alvaro. First of all, I would uh, like to um, thank Ignaki Bilbao and Alvaro Anton and all the other friends of the DigiDux project and the CU universities. So now starting with my topic, the title is Digital Transformation for sure. The specific uh, underline is the OECD approach on digital transformation and on the uh, regarding tax administration uh, by the profile of old and new taxpayers rights. So in the first slide, the the topic, the main topic is could be the digital transformation conceived as a sort of alibi to circumvent the limits set by the law to exercise powers of tax authorities. So um, the main question is look for an equilibrium between digital transformation and and uh, new and old taxpayer payers rights. Uh, it is quite clear that executive power in many states tend to exploit the, the current season of digital transformation as an opportunity to de facto reduce the area of freedom marginalizing the role of the legislative power. In tax matters, uh, government exaggerate sometimes the fight against tax evasion and justify serious mortification of the rule of law and the taxpayers' freedoms. This is the reason why it is so important to get behind a pure national um, internal logic in order to recover a high level of analysis and elaboration not conditioned by demagogy and opportunism. In the next, uh, the next slide, we could see a sort of uh, overview on the OECD, OECD role. Uh, it is it seems worthwhile to take up uh, the debate opened in the OECD Global Forum as a key for interpreting the digital transformation among tax authorities. The late motive we should keep in mind in this background is the more the power of tax authorities increase thanks to the digital transformation, the more the system of taxpayers' guarantees should be modernized and proportionally strengthened. The OECD digital transformation process keep an eye on the trust intended for sure as a person believe that another person or institution will act consistently with their expectation of positive behaviors. From this point of view, the, the, the pivotal role of trust, from this point of view, digital transformation um, enriches such a concept with further facets which basically consist in uncertainties and interdependencies stemming from the digital environment. So OECD focuses, uh, focuses uh, on a risk management approach to ensure trust both for individuals and for institutions. In the next slide, the fourth, we could see a sort of dark side of the digital transformation, think to the importance of the privacy. Privacy is not crucial 
per se, as it represents a fundamental but not absolute right, since it is a condition for the free flow of personal data across borders, and consequently is functional to innovation and economic growth. This stress seems to be focused more on the free flow of personal data rather than, rather than on the data protection. This seems the main trend at the OECD level. Uh, so, the OECD guidelines on the protection of privacy and transborder flows of personal data um, are, in few words, um, oriented to uh, um, to um, prevent states from creating obstacles to transborder flows of personal data. In the name of the protection from the states, from the different countries, cannot be used the, the protection of a sort of um, general principle in favor of the privacy protection as individual freedom. So, uh, privacy is not a, an absolute right for um, individuals. It is possible to um, understand that there are a lot of derogation. First, a state may impose restriction if another member country does not yet substan uh, substantially observe OECD guidelines in, in the case in which um, there could be a sort of re-export of data with the of, um, goal of circumvent its domestic privacy legislation. Other derogation, certain categories of personal data protected in the state's legislation, if the other member state does not provide, provide for an equivalent protection, and this is a limit respect to the uh, free flow of personal data among the different countries. So, in few words, this is the dark side of the free flow of personal data, the protection of privacy. In the next, next slide, um, the stress is on the proportionality, the, the principle of proportionality. In any case, restrictions have to be proportionate according to the OECD approach and also for sure, according to the European Union principles and approach. The principle of proportionalities, proportionality needs to be evaluated with the reference to limitation to transborder flows of personal da data. This implement a risk-based approach. So, the OECD, in few words, the OECD view seems to be even more unbalanced than the EU, EU one, since in the EU, in the EU, the GDPR data protection and the free flow of personal data among member states are equally promoted. At the European level, it is possible um, find a good balance between the different interests, the different values, rather than at the OECD level. Nevertheless, according to the OECD guidelines, it is possible define a sort of minimum standards. 
um, exceptions should be as a few as possible, including those relating to national sovereignty, national security and public policy. So, going on in the following slides, uh, in the slide number six, the topic is the guidelines on the protection of privacy and transborder flows of personal data. So in the in the following slide could be possible identify sort of international a key. The international key from one side national strategies, on the other side limits in data protection, individual participation, accountability, establishment of privacy enforcement authorities. And again, go on in the in the next slides. This the slide number seven. There is a sort of interoperability uh, and privacy protection safeguards. Uh, and it is possible underline that at the level of the OECD guidelines, there, there is the perception of this topic of the privacy protection. Uh, in the following slide, it is possible um, identify two, three main uh, reports at the OECD level. For sure, in the 2003, the well-known re report on taxpayers' rights and obligation, and in the following, following years, the tax administration OECD report in the 2015 and in the 2020, the report on tax administration 3.0. Uh, Nevertheless, in, in this, and now it is possible go on in at the following the following slide nevertheless in this huge quantity of documents of report of information it is possible stress from one side a wake attention from the OECD to the, the um, taxpayer rights or, on the front of taxpayers' protection. Nevertheless, it is possible to identify some remarks on the OECD report analysis. So, first, the primacy of the free flow of data over the protection of rights. This is <laughs> an important uh, uh, feature. The primacy a pragmatic approach, the primacy of free flow of data. Nevertheless, the solution of possible conflicts between the principle of free flow of data and the principle of proportionality. The principle of proportionality could be a sort of tool to look for a possible balance between uh, free flow of data and protection of privacy. And also at the European Union level, according to the ECJ, there are a lot of case law in favor of this equilibrium, according to the principle of proportionality between transparency, exchange of information and protection of uh, protection of privacies, privacy and other taxpayer rights. Coming back to the remarks at the OECD level. 
the paramount significance of a right to privacy, to confidentiality and secrecy, and the need to assure the right of individuals to access and challenge personal data. So, it is possible um, find out some um, um, principle in the OECD works in favor of the uh, protection of privacy and other taxpayer protection. Um, unfortunately, mm, thinking to the to the last the last statement, such principles, such such um, um, remarks uh, are first of all are not mandatory within the OECD context, but above all are um, conceivable only for individuals and not for legal persons, not for corporations and not for companies. In the following slide, I think that now we have few time to stress the different examples. Nevertheless, it is possible identify three different sector. The BEPS Action 13, the BEPS Action 5, and the last, the OCD Guide on the protect, Protection and Confidentiality of Information. So, it is possible understand looking at the slide that in some sector there is an in the last years uh, an, an increase of sensibility in favor of uh, taxpayer rights and above all the most interesting example is in the sector the transfer pricing digitalization in favor of the mm, mm, uh, protection, privacy protection and uh, it is important above all because thinking to the transfer pricing digitalization all the principles are clearly applicable also to in favor of corporation undertakings and companies, not only in favor of individuals. So, going towards the conclusion and in the next in the next slides, in the next slides, uh, digital transformation could be a sort of alibi from the tax administration above all from the governments, above all from the legislator to reduce some guarantees, uh, traditional guarantees in favor of the taxpayer. This is the general, the general framework. I think that we need to stress and underline limits and the principle. Digital transformation of control activity in tax matters cannot escape the traditional limits related to the normal powers of the tax authorities, such as the principle of the legality, the principle of impartiality, above all, above all the principle of proportionality and the right to be heard. Uh, so, going on, we are now in a complex scenario with different phases. Now we are in the middle of the digital transformation. The second, the second step, digital transformation. So, we are living now 
a sort of a lot of uh, regulatory interventions, regulatory modification in this sector with a significant impact on external relation between tax authorities and taxpayers. Nevertheless, it is, doesn't exist a, a similar attention, a similar a similar regulatory um, sensibility from the point of view of the taxpayer rights. So, going on in the in the next slide, slides, the prospect, the most important uh, principle is the proportionality. As powers are strengthened, guarantees in favor of taxpayer must be redesigned and strengthened at the same, such as at the level of the tax authorities power. In going on at the next slide, in a sort of reciprocity. And unfortunately now I have not the possibility to go in deep with the example. Nevertheless, in the slide 15, it is possible and I I recommend you to to um, go in, in deep in some example because it is possible understand from a practical point of view what does it mean reciprocity and proportionality and equilibrium between the increasing of the power of the tax administration from one side and on the other side increasing of the guarantees, increasing of the taxpayer rights. So at <laughs> in the last slide and uh, going directly to some some sentence, some um, conclusion. What are the OECD inputs? The OECD makes explicit its basic logic, inspired by the need for balance based on two pillars. The powers of the tax authorities must always be assessed in the light of the principle of proportionality. Only from this point of view, it is both possible to protect the trust between uh, individuals and tax administrations. The powers of the tax, tax authorities must always be regulated and exercised in such a way as to safeguard the trust that nationals must have in their government. The OECD always keep its distance from the neurologic judges that characterize this topic. Nevertheless, we have to work in deep of this, this digital transformation, uh, looking what is on the dark side of the digital transformation. Despite the technological innovation on the dark side, there are the decreasing of rights of guarantees from the point of view of the taxpayer. So beyond the appearances and the technocratic drives, the digital transformation cannot be used as an alibi to undermine the rule of law. Thank you. I, I finished my presentation.